Hello and welcome back to the newly titled LB show. Lauren said that her teammates call her LB, so that's going to be the title of her new series called the LB show. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Orange Bloods Texas YouTube channel. Today, Lauren teaches Serenity Softball 101. I have like a list of questions that I have for her, just anything softball to help me and the board, the YouTube viewers, Twitter viewers all around just to learn about softball so that we could watch her play and Janae play and just watch them thrive, honestly. Like, you know, why not? Love it. I love it. Cool. All right. And she said I'm also going to be like testing her skills. <laughs> I'm nervous. You really do make me nervous with this because I'm like, is my softball IQ up to par where it should be? I'm like, I've been here. I'm in my last Good. year. Now I'm this questioning my college. <laughs> oh gosh, we'll see. Right. Okay. Like what position do you play, Lauren? I am a utility player, which means I play just about anywhere on the field. Fun fact, in college, I have played every single position except for pitcher, second base, and third base in a game. So I have played every other position on the field, okay. um, which makes me utility. Now, why is that? Why have you just jumped around and not just picked one? In all honesty, I don't think it's a great thing for my def for my defense and like completely blunt. I've never been someone who excels at one position. So I've never taken the time to really get really, really good at one position, like shortstop or center field. I've kind of always jumped around in high school. I caught for my sister because no one else could. So I was stuck catching for her for two years. Then I jumped over to shore travel ball. I played first base. So I really never had a specialty on defense. So that's why I kind of always say my specialty is hitting. So <laughs> defensively, it just, I've always jumped around and I've never really had time to focus on one enough to where it's like, that's my spot. That's my position. If right. that makes sense. No, it does. And you being a utility player, what do you think your position preference is? Because I know like with utility, you play infield and outfield. What's your yeah. preference? See, I really do love the infield. I like playing first base because I'm right next to the pitcher and I feel like I can talk to them and I can be really supportive or hype them up and they can hear me versus in the outfield. Obviously I'm farther away, I'm yelling and it's not as personal mm -hmm. as it doesn't feel as close, but I feel more comfortable with my skills in the outfield. So they kind of go both sides, but I definitely like the infield because it's so close. I feel like I'm getting so much action, but then the outfield is my comfort zone where I don't really have any doubt in the outfield. I know I'm going to catch and throw the ball versus the infield. It makes me a little bit nervous. Sometimes I can get too committed in the infield. So comfort zone is outfield. And technicality wise, what type of skills do you need to be in the outfield? In the outfield, I think it requires a lot of pride in all honesty. It's like you have to have the refuse to let the ball touch the green mentality. So you're laying out, slide catching, going into the wall and being comfortable with that because you're the last line of defense. You have to have that pride. It's like the ball will not get past me. It's not going to go through my glove. I will block it depending on the tempo of the game. But really, it also requires a lot of communication. So it's like you have to be a communicative person. You have to command the entire field. So another thing you might not know is there's priority in softball on defense. So the priority starts in center field. So center field is like the priority of the entire defense. And then it goes to the wing outfielders. So left field and right field, those are second priority. Then it's the middle end field. So we have a shortstop in second. And over the two of those, shortstop has priority. And then the corner, so first base, third base, and then catcher and obviously pitcher is last on the priority list. But it's like the center fielder commands the entire field and we can see the entire field. So we have to be able to communicate with our teammates what's going on, what we're seeing, and share everything out there, I guess. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That was a lot. That was a lot. No, it was a lot. I kind of want to like, <laughs> I was just about to say that. I kind of want, okay, yeah, let's pull up a little diagram. <laughs> so I shared my screen so that Lauren can basically explain to me the field of softball. I asked her originally if she likes playing infield versus outfield better as a utility player. She gave me the answer of outfield. And please tell me why, Lauren, again. Okay, so I prefer the outfield. It's my comfort zone. This and is the outfield out here. The, the outfield green. is the green just past the imaginary infield dirt. So that is center field that you just circled right there. Outfield. 
Beautiful. And then, so that's where I personally like to be the best. I feel the most comfortable out there. It's fun. You get to run around. You're the last line of defense. My secondary favorite position is first base. So I like first. Yes, because I'm right next to the pitcher and I'm so involved. I feel like when I'm so close and I can just talk to my pitcher, hype them up, give them whatever they need in that situation. And just, I feel like I'm just like having a conversation the entire game and I'm super involved. But then again, my comfort zone and where I feel the most confident is the outfield. So that's kind of my personal preferences. Now, where is center field right here at second base? So center field is right where you have that circle in the Uh outfield. That would be the center field position. Okay, center field. Yes. So we have center and then left field is, I don't know if I'm mirrored or how it works. That's what I thought about too. I was like, am I to your left or? No, no, that's that's right. And then right field is on this side. Okay. So then we have outfield priority. We're going to give the whole lesson here. So the cat or the C where you say center field, that is like queen bee of softball. They have all the power on the entire field. They can call anyone off on a fly ball. So hypothetically, there's a fly ball that's at the pitcher circle. If the center fielder could run in and catch the ball, they have priority to be able to call anyone else off. of Like ball. run in here. Like regardless of where the ball is, if the center fielder calls it, everyone else has to gather away. Oh, okay. So they're just like, they're just queen B. They're typically okay. one of the faster players on the team. Um, they really command the entire field. So center field, just put a crown on her. That's yeah. like, that's your queen B. So she's, she's number one priority. Okay. And then the next in line of priority is your left and your right fielders. So those are still outfield positions, but they have still priority over the entire infield. The only person that can call them off is the center fielder. So as in like a ball that's coming, like somebody just hit the ball down here. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking like, um, in between second base and third base is shortstop. And then, so say the shortstop and the third baseman, there's a fly ball just behind them. And they're all three of those players left short and third are all running towards the ball. If the left fielder calls it at any point, everyone else has to get out of the way. So they have priority. If they, they want to catch the ball, they have priority to catch it. And then the same is for right field. Okay. For second base and first base. So anytime there's like a tweener ball, the outfield always has priority over the infield. What's a tweener ball? They're the ones that are so annoying and they drop all the time in softball. They're like these little blooper hits off the end of someone's bat. They drive me crazy because they're hard. It's like everyone's running to that one spot. It's in between the infield and the outfield. So there's say we're playing deep in the outfield closer to the fence, there's more room for the ball to drop. And it's those that just barely get hit or they get miss hit and they just drop. They always seem to fall. And it's just so annoying because they're not like <laughs> barreled up. They're not crushed and it's still right. Comes. But yeah, that's a tweener. That's a tweener. Or, okay. Yeah, we can call it. I like that tweener. <laughs> a tweener ball. Okay. Oh, I thought that was literally the name of it. I mean, there, I think there's a lot of ways, a blooper, a tweener, um, I guess those are the only two that I would really use. Okay. And what type of skills do you have to possess to just be a good infielder in terms of just like getting everywhere or being choppy? What is it? Infielders, our coach always says they move like water. So they're very smooth. There's no choppy movements really at all. It's okay. the ball is going to dictate how you move. So say it's taking you back, you kind of let the ball take your glove that way and you maneuver your body to throw to first base, whether you have to spin around for it, if it's a backhand forehand, he, our coach wants us to move like water. So it's smooth. It's effortless. It's through the ball, not stab, start throw. It's very smooth and just very chill. So that's infielders. They want to move like water, be very relaxed and also really important for infielders to have a quick first step. So that's probably similar to track. I mean, really any sport you want to have a good jump on the mm-hmm. ball. So you, you want to be able to read it off the barrel, whether it's to the left, to the right, in front of you or behind you, and be able to have a good first step to get to the ball before it falls. Okay. That makes sense. Now terminology. I have a couple, I saw it on the stat sheet and I was like, I have absolutely no idea what this means. I could Google it, but I could also ask Lauren Burke. So <laughs> I'm nervous <A-B>. now. <laughs> <laughs> right. I did. Okay. AB. What does AB stand for? At bat. 
So it's at, how many at bats you've had um, over the course of the year. And who determines when you go up to bat? So there's a batting lineup that the coach gives us before every game. Coach really changes our lineup a lot. So we're you never really know what the lineup's going to look like, but typically every batter one through nine will have three at bats per game, if not more. So you have three adding on to your ABs per year per game. So everyone that's in the lineup will get at least one at bat through the first time, second and third, you can get three to four at bats in a game. And if at any point it just does not come down to like that eighth person per mm -hmm. se, just because it just hasn't, do they roll over to the next game or the next inning? Yeah, so it goes next inning. So it's three outs and then it picks up exactly where it left off. So say Janae started us off and she got a hit, but then the next three batters got out. We don't start up back at Janae. You start where we finish off in the lineup. And then just keeps funneling through all the way through to the seventh inning. But that's kind of another reason why coaches like to put really, really great players at the top of the lineup because they're going to get more at bats. So like Janae is our leadoff hitter because we want Janae to be at the plate okay. as many times as possible because she's just an amazing hitter. So you want her to have more opportunities to drive in runs or just have more at bats throughout the year. Okay. That makes sense. Now our runs. Yeah. I guess, I'm guessing. Okay. That's what it is. <laughs> I mean, you, I'm, Shoot, you know better than me. <laughs> I would I would say runs. I can't think of anything else would be as far as hitting goes. So the stat sheet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And H hits. Okay. RBIs. Runners batted in. So that's if I'm a hitter and there's a runner on second and third, and I get a hit and both of them score, that's I get those points. I get those two runners batted in. So that counts because for my you personal led them RBI. to do that. Yes. Yes. And is that also where a triple comes from? Um, not necessarily. I mean, a triple, you don't have, you don't necessarily have any runners batted in if you hit a triple, but there's no runners on base. Which means that you go all the way on, around to the third base. Yeah. So if you get a triple, it's just a, it's just an H column. It's just a hit. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Unless okay. there's runners on base that came around and touched home plate to score, nothing is counted as uh, runs batted in. Okay. And then what are singles and doubles? So singles are like ground balls through the infield is normally you're just on first base. So you got a, got a good hit. You're on first base. So single is first. If you get a double, typically balls to the gap, you shot it in the right center gap, left center gap, any round and you are on second base. That's a double and then triple all the way around to third base. And that's a triple. Okay. Yeah. And how long are softball games? What was that? How long are softball games? Seven innings, but they can end in five. There's a run rule. So if we are winning eight to zero after, after the fifth inning or really above eight in any score, so it could be 10 to two, that's a run rule and the game can stop at five innings. And if it goes long, can it go uh, it, can, it can go long with a tie. There's been a national championship game um, at one point that was like over 15 innings, which is just absolutely crazy. It's like two games in the matter of one. So there can be long games and it just goes into like kind of tie break style where after seven innings, if you're tied, we're going to have the last out goes to second base. So it kind of gives then the hitter and the team on offense has to find a way to score them. And then if the other team has the chance to match it almost or beat it. And then if they don't, the other team wins and vice versa. Okay. That makes I don't sense. know if I worded that easy to understand, but <laughs> no, 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 it makes sense. Okay. okay. Have you heard the term tagging up? Yes. What does yeah. that mean? So tagging up is when a fly ball is hit to the outfield and you're a base runner. So if okay. I'm on second base and I see a fly ball is hit to right field, I can go back to second base. So my foot is on second base. And as soon as the fielder makes contact with the ball with her glove, I can take off and take third. So it's an out for the hitter, like the hitter is out, but I can still advance the base. So I can get 60 feet closer to scoring a run because I tagged up on a fly ball and advance the next base. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you can't leave early. You have to wait until the outfielder or whoever's catching it actually has contact or makes contact with the ball. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. I feel like I'm just like way more knowledgeable on softball. Because I knew it was not that difficult for me to understand. I just needed someone to explain it. Someone like LB. <laughs> I got you.
Okay, so you guys are actually in Florida right now in Clearwater. Yes. About to play two games tomorrow, which is Friday, you know, because I never know when these are coming out. Two games Friday, two games Saturday, and one game Sunday. Yeah. That's a lot of games. And yeah, I want to know, like, how do you prepare mentally for three days of just straight games? You know, it, it is hard. It's mentally draining. You're at the softball field all day long. And we're playing really, really good competition this week. It's top 20 teams just about all the way around. We have top five teams that we're competing against. So it's going to be a lot of fun, but it is definitely hard to not overlook certain teams that, because they're ranked lower and then get more amped up for the say number two team that we're playing. So mentally, I think it's just really important to build a routine on game day and everyone has their individual one that gets them set up in a position to be successful. But I mean, I can't lie. It is mentally draining. You are on your feet for a long time and you have to find a way to be engaged in the game, regardless of the situation or what's going on outside. It's like you have to find a way to stay engaged for a long period of time. But I mean, it's difficult, but we've also gotten to the point where we've done it for so long. We grew up travel ball playing three games a day. So now it's just, you know, we play five games in a weekend and we go home and it's preseason. It doesn't last that long. It's, just helps us prepare for big 12 play. Okay. And what's yeah. your personal routine to prepare for it? Um, I'm, I'm a big reader lately. I've been reading and I like to journal. So before every game, I like to write down what feels good, what doesn't feel good, whether it's in my swing, I do the same thing on uh, before and after practice. I'm like, what really went well today? What really did not go well today? How could I be better? And so then if I'm in a slump, which in all honesty, right now, I kind of feel like I am in a slump. So I can look back at the times where I was feeling like I was on a high and I was seeing beach balls at the plate and I can go back and look at what was I feeling? What did it look like? So I can go through and read through my old journal notes and then also take new ones. But another thing is we do a lot of team stuff. We have breakfast as a team in the morning. It's like mandatory. We get out of bed regardless of the time of the game. We did treatment with Cassie and we call it Melbility. Our strength trainer, her name is Mel. So we call it Melbility and our team goes out and we go outside and do a whole yoga flow, really open up our hips, especially after flights. I think that's so important. Yeah. Our team does it every single time we travel. We do some mm -hmm. sort of yoga flow and that really helps us get ready to prepare for games and for the weekend. But as far as like super personal, random stuff, I do my hair the same every game, makeup the same every game. I don't like put my socks on a certain way. I'm not that extreme. Yeah, I was gonna say, is it I original have for my you? Own systems. I have my own systems that make me feel comfortable and confident, but everyone's are a little bit different and unique to them, but we find whatever works. Okay. And why do you feel like you've been in a slump lately? Um, I just haven't been performing to where I want to be performing. And I mean, it's hard because it's like I'm in my last year and I want to be doing so well. And it's like you get in your head and it's mental. Yeah. And I mean, the coaches are going to put out the, the best nine players that are performing the best. And if I'm not in that top nine, it's unfortunate. But then I just have to embrace the role that I'm in that game and know that my name's going to be called at any point and be ready for that time that my name is called. Um, but yeah, I think that just embracing the role, being the best teammate I can be is important. But yeah, I just haven't been seeing the ball extremely well at the plate. It's something that I'm working on right now. But catch me in a couple of weeks. We'll, we'll be back on track. Let's It'll be completely different story crossed. in a couple of weeks. Yeah, let's do it. And then we'll reflect back on this talk. Oh, literally like show basically just this tape of you in a slump next week yeah. or four weeks now. And I'm feeling it. So I need to really tell myself, look back and let's be in a better place next time. No, I understand. Senior year can definitely be just straight anxiety all the time. Yeah. Because you kind of feel like, oh my gosh, I'm running out of time. I'm running out of time. And then you're also trying to convince yourself to relax. Because like, no, you have plenty of time. But you don't want to look back on the season and be like, dang, like, I wish I panicked in February a little bit more, you know? Yeah. But you just have to focus on one thing at a time, which is shoot, Florida State, which exactly. is, I think, they're number six right now? Uh, yeah, they're top 10. They're always in a super solid program. Always and really good. Yeah, they're just a team. They're coached really well, and they're just, it's honestly a team that I look to, and I kind of look up to the way that they interact with each other. It's kind of want to follow a team like that. They always find a way to come through, get to the World Series, even if they're not top eight. So I'm excited to play them and honestly learn from them at the same time as competing against them. Absolutely. And how have you guys prepared for Florida State specifically? Or just we teams actually, in general specifically? 
So we haven't prepared for one team until really big 12 plays where we really hone in on the pitchers that we're going to face and the hitters that we're going to be defending against. But in preseason, when we're playing five different teams, it's hard to really focus on one team throughout the week to prepare for that. So before each game, we do watch film of the opponent that we're going to be facing specifically the pitchers our defensive coach will tell us the tendencies of some of the hitters to prepare but ultimately we kind of think of preseason as we're just continuing to raise the bar playing we're not necessarily playing the name on their chest but in preseason it's really important for us to just play to our standard and if we do that the scoreboard should take care of itself okay thank you lauren for teaching me just some softball 101 you know putting us just in your space about how you're feeling and good luck in Clearwater because you're so many games. I have to get used to this because in track and field, we did not do that. So this is abnormal for me. Um, so good luck to you. And all I can say is what? Hook them? Like, comment, subscribe to the Orange Bloods Texas YouTube channel. This is the LB Show. Perfect. Thanks for having me. <laughs>